All right, here I am with the engine, as you can see, it's still hanging on the thing here, as you can see, and I'm about to start taking everything apart, as you can see here, everything will be taken apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten uh, bolts for the transmission here. And here is the image for the transmission, the illustration. If you want to see the bolts uh, and the position that the bolts are, maybe this is more a little bit uh, more clear for you. And this bolt here is the hardest one to take off from this transmission and engine because of where it's located. Right there, it's a big mess as you can see. But you still can take it out. Gotta use wobble adapters, wobble extensions, and everything like that. Let me get a closer look here just to give you a clue. These bolts here from this side, I remove them from beneath on, on that side right there. And these ones here, I remove them from that side and some from this side here. You have to figure out uh, how you have to figure out how to take them out. It's not that hard. All right, back here with this engine again. I have to do the. I have to take out the cylinder head. Gotta do head gasket. Gotta do. Uh, I gotta do timing chain and also gotta check the cylinder number one because uh, I believe the piston is bad. He, I did a uh, leak down test and it had no compression, so I gotta see what's going on with that. I'll be replacing all the pistons in this case from the manufacturer from Audi. Now down here, I have uh, put the engine on time right now. The timing mark and the engine block and the crunch of poly are lining up, but on the on top, the two cam shafts that two cut out are not lining up at all. They are supposed to. So that tells me that the engine is uh, completely off time. It had a correlation code anyway and uh, a timing over code. So there is a lot uh, to do on this engine right now. Now I have a uh, place some marks here on the flex plate and then on the engine block because uh, once I'm putting everything back, I want to leave the, the flex plate in the same spot as it is. You don't have to do that. Uh, that is just up to me. And uh, we have a 10 millimeter triple square socket here for all of this bolt. I'm going to use my impact gun here. I'm going to just uh, lose them right now for now, uh, for this moment. I lose all of them. And here in this area, in this area, this is the rear of the engine. As you can see, only a triple square T uh, thirty, and this is T thirty as a matter of fact. And just uh, sockets like that you're gonna be using here, as you can see. Uh, it's very basic. Only this kind of uh, this bolt here, as you can see, you're gonna be using uh, this one. It's uh, Allen six millimeter. All right, I, I already took out the flex plate, as you can see, and you can see the marks there still, because um, I don't want to, I just want to leave that uh, like that. And I took out all the bolts, you can see, and I have painted in different colors, uh, the different sizes. Uh, that is just in case. All right, and I already took out the upper timing chain cover, and this is the lower timing chain cover here. I'm gonna take it out right now to see what's going on here. And uh, ay, 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 I can see here a lot of debris, a lot of rubble, a lot of pieces of uh, the guys here, timing chain guys. You can see, no wonder this engine had a timing overcoat and correlation coat. There is a lot of work to do on this engine. It was not drivable anymore anyway. So let's see. Taking out the timing chain tensioner here. All right, I already took out the cam adjuster on the intake side here, and this one is the exhaust side, 16 millimeter bolts, by the way. And uh, these are the bolts here uh, for the control housing here. But these are number eight millimeter triple square. This is the control housing here, as you can see, just pull it out evenly. Do not shake it to the sides because it has some springs inside. It might trick you like it's getting stuck, but it's not. All right, now the camshafts are free to come out since I already took out the camshaft bearing caps, as you can see here. Now the injectors in this case, in this vehicle, sometimes it seems like they get stuck. So in that case, just pull it out like this with a flathead screwdriver and then from the top at the same time with two flathead screwdrivers and they come out easily. All right, this is a T40 here, as you can see, to remove these two bolts here. This one, very easy. And then uh, we have another one here in the bottom, as you can see. Just remove them very easily. All right, I'm bolting the cylinder head here. You start in the center and then spread it out to the rear and to the front of the cylinder head and loose them little by little. Do not bolt one completely and then go to the other one because you're gonna put pressure on one side of the cylinder head and that is not good. Now, before removing the, the bolts of the cylinder head, just be careful if you're gonna do this like me, that I don't have an appropriate place to do it. I'm doing this just basically on the floor, as you can see, and the engine moves to the side, especially because it requires a lot of force to remove the, this bolt from the cylinder head. 
as you can see here, the engine moves to the side. It will not tilt to anywhere, but it moves if, if this is going to be the case. As you can see, it moves a lot. So do your best to, uh, to lose the bolt if your case is gonna be like mine. Now the engine without the cylinder head, this is the engine plug here, as you can see, and I'm realizing that this head gasket was leaking also. You can see here, hopefully the camera can pick it up. It was leaking already, so everything is a mess here. This is the timing chain here. I'm about to take it out and I made some marks just for the camera to have more visibility. 16 millimeter bolt here. These are the marks as you can see them right here. And this I locked it like this with this uh, this extension in order for now uh, the sprocket to turn the entire engine. So I got my impact gun and I took it out very easily. At this point, I have tilted this engine to the other side as you can see right here uh, to have a, a better access. I'm removing the oil pan. 8 millimeter bolt triple square as you can see them and i already removed the ones on the bottom uh, the ones on the bottom because before tilting it because i didn't want it to be fighting right there you know no space between the floor and cart and everything here so i removed them and don't use cordless ratchet or one impact gun to get these bolts out and these are 12 millimeter bolts here for the connecting rod bearings i gotta i gotta start taking them out soon now I can see a lot of debris here, a lot of rubbles inside from the guys that were broken, the timing chain guys. See how it looks, everything is a mess here inside, a lot of debris. I have to uh, clean this up very well. A lot of work to do on this engine, even the strainer for the, for the oil pump, as you can see, a lot of debris there too. Now, if you're going to replace the pistons like me, turn over the engine accordingly and just make sure you put the, the connecting rod bearing in a position where you have access to both bolts. Like in this case, as you can see, both bolts are accessible at this point already. I'm only going to be replacing all the pistons, even though the, the only problem is cylinder number one, piston number one, but I'm going to be replacing all of them. Now, another thing I do is I always put a mark first before taking them out I, and, uh, and the connecting rod bearings just to know that this is the position that it is and that's how I'm going to be installing it once I uh, put them back, once I'm, I'm installing them back. And use a ratchet to take these bolts out. Do not use an impact gun. All right, very important. When you loosen these bolts, just loose them very evenly. Do one half of a turn and then go to the other one and then come back to the... Uh, to the one you started and so on so they both coming out evenly all right this is the first uh, bearing as you can see connecting rod bearing and still with the bolts and also the mark right there as you can see that's how they're going to go back once i'm installing them back and i'm pushing the piston here out of the out of the cylinder board as you can see with this screwdriver this is a big screwdriver from harbor fry just be careful not to scratch the crunch off or anything like that just uh, watch what you're doing when you're doing this yeah, it's coming out right there. Just push it from the piston and not from the connecting rod bearing because then you're gonna scratch it. So be careful with it. Very careful not to scratch the crunch up when you're taking out the screwdriver. Now, before taking out this piston, I want to show something that I just saw. It's broken here. As you can see where the, the piston ring goes, it's broken. Now, thank God the pieces have not gone anywhere, but they are still there because they have nowhere to go because there is no space. Otherwise, they will cause uh, another a big problem here. But see that gap right there? It's broken. And also on this side, has a big gap because it's broken. The pieces are dancing here. As you can see right there, I'm lifting it up, trying to lift it up. So we're going to see what happens here. And here is the connecting rod with the piston and see the marks right there and the connecting rod that that's gonna tell me how it's going to go again. I do that because I like I like to do that all the time. It's going to go in this position when it goes back once I'm putting everything back. Now taking a closer look here, see the piston here. Hopefully the camera can pick this up a little bit better. See the big gap right there, the pieces. I took out the pieces already from the piston right here as you can see these two pieces. Uh, so this piston is broken, it's horrible, I mean, big problem on this engine. Now also when you're doing this, you have to take a very good look at every component to see if it's out of spec or within spec from the manufacturer, in this case Audi. I will not be measuring anything, I'm just gonna take a good look and I know when something doesn't work or something needs to be replacement. Like this connecting rod bearing is still in good condition. All right, taking everything apart here, I use this 99 cents tool to take uh, out this snap ring. 
and uh, just be careful. This is pointers. If you're gonna do it like that, not to scratch anything on the piston. If you, in this case, it's garbage, but uh, gotta do it anyway. This is a 12 millimeter bolt, three A's. I pushed the the pin, the connecting rod pin, because it was kind of hard to take it out. And this is going to be part one of the entire job. Thanks for watching the video, and God bless you all.